The final item of business today is a member's business debate on motion number 12934 in the name of Hans Alam Malik on growing Islamophobia in Scotland and graffiti on the new central Gurdwara, Glasgow. This debate will be concluded without any questions being put, and I would be grateful if those members who wish to speak in the debate could please press the request to speak buttons as soon as possible. Once again, could I ask for members leaving the chamber to do so quietly, please? I call on Hans Alam Malik to open the debate. Seven minutes, please. Thank you very much, and good afternoon, Presiding Officer. It is an honour to bring this motion for debate as the vandalism of the Central Gurdwara in Glasgow was deeply hurtful incident for many reasons. At the end of March, the Sikh religious building was defamed by vandals with the words of no Sharia, a Nazi symbol, and another anti-Islamic message that would be inappropriate to repeat today. And as the community heard the news, all the communities were in complete shock that such disgraceful words were put on the walls of a great Glasgow Gurdwara. The Sikh community behaved with great dignity, with Chiranjit Singh commenting, it's a climate of rampant Islamophobia. And today, out of respect to the Sikh community, I wear the Sorapa uh, scarf presented to me to mark the respect to our delegation while visiting the uh, Pakistan Glasgow Lahore Cycle Challenge, raising funds for the Sikh Children Hospital in Glasgow where we were met by the ministers of the Holy Gurdwara, the Nalkana Saab, the birthplace of Guru Nanak. And the Gurdwara is, of course, in Pakistani Punjab. Calls to have a dialogue with the police, local and national politics, politicians to create an inclusive society and celebrate the contributions made by Scottish ethnic minorities went out to the country. It's shameful that an Ionic Gurdwara has been vandalized. However, this is not an unusual case. I still remember the firebombing of the Gurdwara in Kent after the Sam and Sam and London terrorist attacks and the jeers at turban-wearing six men from racists at the time. As a Muslim, I totally condone this hate, hateful attack on a beautiful new Glasgow Gurdwara. As it is a place of Sikh worship and community engagement and totally disrespects uh, places of worship. It has also been the most welcome addition to our religions, culture and architectural life of Glaswegians. It is clear that targeting Muslim communities from bigots and hate, hate, hate propagators should be challenged by all of us. No community should suffer or be at the end of hate crime. I fully agree with Alec Neal's statement in the wake of the incident that acts like this only reveal the ignorance of few individuals who do not respect or appreciate Scotland's rich diversity. However, actions are needed to minimize this kind of incidents happening again in the future. Mr. Neil has equalities as part of his portfolio. I would like to know what he's doing to root out racism and racial discrimination from Scottish society today. I asked the parliament, parliament question in 2013 as to what the Scottish government would, would up, when the Scottish government would update their 2008 to 2011 race equality statement. At that point, Mr. Neil said it would be published at the end of the summer 2013. Two years later, I'm still waiting for the report. Don't know who's writing it. But I can tell you, not only am I waiting for it, but so is the communities. And that pretty much sums up how much of a priority this current Scottish Government gives racial equality agenda, which is already a step down from actually talking about racism. And please note, my criticism of the Scottish Government is just and based on evidence. It's not just hearsay. 
I'm not plucking these up out of the sky. This episode is a sad reminder that religions and ethnic minorities face public ridicule, criminal attacks, as well as many in indirect acts of discrimination. We must recognize the severity of this issue. Public and uh, uh, politicians need to follow up and root out discrimination of all kinds at any stage and any level. Otherwise, we will continue to witness such heartless incidents up and down Scotland. As racists do not care whether you're Hindu, Jewish, Muslim, or Sikh, you are different, so you'll do any excuse at all. So I once again call upon the Scottish Government to step up to its responsibilities and actually do their duty and protect all its citizens equally. Presiding officer, may I say that the government has a responsibility. It needs to be aware that there are many people, particularly shopkeepers, taxi drivers, people who are working on the coal face, who are facing regular incidents of racism. Many have actually given up reporting the incidences because they feel that the police are not treating them seriously. Many have complained that when they've phoned up about racial discrimination or racist incidents, police don't actually turn up for days at a time because it's not an emergency. And the attitude like that means that people lose confidence. And not only that, people who perpetrate these acts get confidence. So we're looking at two balances. One on one end, people are getting disheartened, losing confidence. On the other hand, we are actually encouraging people to continue to perpetrate these crimes because there is no comeback to them. They think they can go walk away from these issues. Therefore, it's absolutely imperative that we actually deal with our communities rather than talk about them. These issues about protecting religious uh, freedom, talking about protecting people's ethnic backgrounds is important. I and Hamza Yusuf are uh, proud products of this country, but we even today face discrimination. Hamza has had some very highlighted cases recently. So we know for a fact that this is happening. We don't need additional evidence. What we do need is the government actually to get down, roll up its sleeves, get some money, and do some work. We need to educate our communities. The, the schools are doing a wonderful job. I can assure you, we don't need to go and look at the schools and say, we need to teach our children, and we need to, they're doing their job. It's us adults who need teaching. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. We now turn to the open debate. Speeches of four minutes, please. And I call Kenny McCaskill to be followed by Malcolm Chisholm. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I thank Hamzala Malik for bringing this uh, motion? Uh, he has an impeccable track record in pursuing these issues, although I would have to say that I do take issue with uh, some of the comments that I thought were a bit more political uh, and perhaps undeserved. This chamber is united. I disagree with uh, uh, the political positioning of many, both on left and right, uh, on occasions. But I think this chamber has always been united in condemning racism, condemning Islamophobia. We did so in 9-11. We do so today, and that is how we have to stand. Clearly, there are issues, and that's what we're here for, and that's why, as I say, I'm sure he'll reflect upon that. The reason I'm happy and delighted to support him is that this is, first of all, to address two of our not just vibrant but cherished communities, uh, the Sikh community and the Islamic community. They are long-standing, they are part of Scotland and we have to uh, cherish them and look after them. Uh, I know the Gurdwara in Glasgow and uh, Hamzala's comments about its uh, magnificent are quite correct. I don't know it as well, I've only visited once as a Gurdwara that I visit regularly down in Leith, but I do know the community in Edinburgh uh, very, very well indeed. And indeed I was at the Vicassi ceremony just a few weeks back. Uh, they have been here not one or two generations, but we're now on to the fourth, fifth and sixth generations. That's the situation for the Sikh community in Leith. It would probably be an even uh, greater lineage uh, through in the west of Scotland. They have come from two brothers who first came here, but they're now a vital part of the city of Edinburgh, especially in the Leith area, but throughout the city, and we do need to look after them. The same applies in even greater terms because of the numbers with the Islamic community. Many have come from the Indian subcontinent, but others have come from elsewhere. We require to look after them and to cherish them. 
They are as valid and vibrant a part of Scotland as myself or any other member of this chamber. That's how it has to be, and that's why we require to ensure that action is taken that no doubt the Minister will comment upon. You don't have to be able to trace your lineage to 1314 to be able to claim any ethnicity as a Scot. The Islamic community and indeed the Sikh community have more of a lineage perhaps than many white Christian communities who have come more recently. But whether they are Spanish or Polish, whether they are Italian or Indian, uh, whether they are uh, able to claim their lineage back to 1314 or even beyond, uh, they are equally but no more so uh, Scots than the Islamic and Sikh community and that is how we have to cherish them. We do face challenges with Islamophobia and with racism. Hamza Al Malik is right to make sure that the government are held to account, but it's certainly my view that both the government and indeed the authorities are doing everything that they can to address it. That was, I think, accepted by the Sikh community with regard to the Gurdwara, but we do require to be ever vigilant. The ignorance is unbounded. The fact that the tenor of the uh, uh, graffiti uh, showed that in terms of being able, unable to differentiate between Sikhism and between Islam, uh, never mind, as I say, portraying uh, Nazi uh, symbols, uh, that is entirely unacceptable. So, as I say, I think what we have to do is reiterate as a chamber, which will be done, by every speaker from whatever party, that it is entirely unacceptable and the full force and weight of the law will be brought down upon those who do carry out racist or Islamophobic hate crime. Equally, I think, and perhaps more so, we require to make it quite clear that the Sikh and Islamic communities in Scotland are a vital part. We cherish them, we hold them dear, they make Scotland a better place and we will not be divided in any way we stand with them, we stand for them, because they are us. Thank you very much. And I now call Malcolm Chisholm to be followed by Jamie McGregor. Officer, uh, Hans Alamalik for bringing forward uh, this motion. And I'm sure I uh, speak for everyone in the chamber when I say we all condemn this uh, appalling combination uh, of hatred uh, and ignorance that we saw in terms of the graffiti on the Gurdwara uh, in uh, Glasgow. I think uh, we need to challenge that and all forms of racial and religious hatred. And of course, the motion in particular focuses on Islamophobia because that, we know, has been a particular problem for uh, several years. Like, like Kenny McCaskill, I would like to uh, uh, emphasize how much we value and celebrate the contribution of the Sikh community and the Muslim community and indeed uh, all other ethnic minority communities uh, living in Scotland today. Of course, I know uh, as the MSP uh, representing uh, Leith the, the, the particular connection of the Sikh community with Leith over many decades and I certainly uh, would like to say, as I've said on many occasions, how much I value the contribution they've made to Scottish life. But since the uh, uh, motion refers in particular to Islamophobia, let me, me concentrate on that. And uh, I think there was a very interesting and important uh, report from the Scottish Government in 2011 about the experience of being a Muslim living in Scotland. And I think it's quite sobering when we read that report to realise uh, the extent uh, of uh, the problems that they're confronted with every day in Scotland. Uh, it found that despite identifying as Scottish, Muslims living in Scotland experience feelings of otherness and difference, resulting uh, from the experiences of uh, religious and racial discrimination. The report also cited research by Hussein and Miller from 2006, which found that almost half of the majority community in Scotland were identified as holding Islamophobic attitudes. And that was certainly something... Uh, that shocked me. I remember 2006 well because uh, I was um, Minister for Communities then and in 2005 and, and did quite a lot on this issue in the wake uh, of, of, of the uh, London bombings in 2005 and we know that there was an increase uh, at that time and uh, some other events since then have perhaps uh, reinforced that. So we must in particular challenge uh, Islamophobia wherever we find it uh, uh, at uh, this time. I thought the words of uh, David Haynes were very inspiring in relation to this. And you may, may, sorry, the brother of David Haynes. You may remember that David Haynes was a British hostage murdered by Islamic uh, State militants. And the important point, I think, that he emphasised that Islam was not to blame. And we have to keep saying this. It's obvious to us. I think it's obvious to the majority of people in Scotland. But this, the atrocities that are committed by a few 
are used uh, as part of the campaign uh, against Muslims in Scotland. And he said, the brother of David Hen says, the Muslim faith is not to blame for uh, ISIS, nor is it the fault of people uh, of Middle Eastern descent. The attraction of complete control and the use of terror as an implement of population control has widespread appeal to many disenfranchised throughout society. I have become aware of a number of verses in the Quran that I feel particularly apt at this time. And he quotes, since good and evil cannot be equal, repel thou evil with something that is better. And I think we need to, we need to challenge the ignorance uh, about the Muslim religion, which, which is shown, um, not least, I suppose, uh, by, by, by the graffiti, when, when many of the people uh, who are filled with this hatred can't even tell the difference between Islam and the Sikh uh, religion. But we have to, we have to tell the truth uh, about the, the Muslim religion, because every Muslim I know, and it doesn't surprise me to say this, of course, is absolutely as appalled by the acts of terrorism uh, as anybody else in society. Now, um, Hans al Malik uh, emphasised education, and, and, and he's probably right. There's a lot of positive things going on in schools. But another thing that I read in preparation for this uh, uh, debate was a report that the NES UWT Teachers Union did for Equality Matters on what steps should be taken to, be, to tackle Islamophobia in educational settings. And they emphasise that school and college leaders have a critical role to play in ensuring that issues related to Islamophobia are identified and addressed appropriately and effectively. Nobody is born a racist. We all know people learn these attitudes as they grow up in societies and challenging them uh, in school is absolutely fundamental because it's schools where people uh, uh, can, be, uh, can be challenged when they're young. But clearly we have a responsibility as politicians as well. And if I can just end, since my time is up, by quoting the secretary of the Glasgow Gurdwara, uh, um, Charandeep Singh, who said uh, this, uh, this, uh, this sad incident, the incident that uh, triggered the debate, this sad incident should energise our political leaders and fellow citizens to, to, con to continue to campaign to root out such hateful beliefs. Thank you. Before we move on with the debate, could I just remind members to lift their microphones and speak to them? Otherwise, the Chamber has a difficulty hearing, and I don't like to interrupt members' speeches. Jamie McGregor to be followed by Sarah Boyack. Um, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I congratulate Hans Arla Malik on securing this evening's debate and also pay tribute to him for the good work he does in consistently speaking out against Islamophobia and indeed religious intolerance more broadly, and for raising issues which some wish would just disappear without a debate. Um, it is our job in this place to meet racism head on. Bad things happen when bullies are left to run riot. And these people who do these things display a brutish ignorance which is similar to the Nazi gangs in their treatment of the Jews in the 1930s. Um, let me begin on behalf of the Scottish Conservatives to join in the strong condemnation of these perpetrators of the racist graffiti on the central Gurdwara in Glasgow, and indeed to condemn any incidents of racist or religiously intolerant graffiti on any religious building. I note from the news yesterday the dreadful anti-Catholic graffiti that has been sprayed on St Andrew's Roman Catholic Church in Livingston. MSPs from across the political spectrum can rightly unite in our condemnation of this type of behaviour, and the police should be robust in trying to apprehend those responsible, as I'm sure they will do, and ensure their crimes are subject to the due legal process. I also agree with the sentiments of Hanzala Malik's motion in relating to the particular victimisation of those in our Sikh communities who were targeted by ignorant extremists so ignorant that they cannot even tell the difference between Muslims and Sikhs. I recognise the concerns about growing Islamophobia in Scotland and note many organisations, including the Church of Scotland, the Muslim Council of Britain, and, all Scottish, and the Scottish Council of Jewish Communities, they all, have all spoken out against this. All of us, as MSPs, also have a role to play in speaking out and informing our constituents that those extremists who give Islam a bad name and in doing so attract significant media coverage are a tiny, unrepresentative minority who simply do not speak for or represent the vast majority of peace-lovely Muslims who live and work in our communities. We also need British Muslims at all levels to continue to speak out in support of democracy, moderation and tolerance 
as the Muslim Council of Britain consistently seeks to do. And I'm pleased that at the recent general election in the UK, we saw an increase in the number of British Muslims being elected as MPs, and significantly, more Muslim women elected. They really have an important role as we go forward. Tackling the causes of Islamophobia will involve many approaches and long-term strategies, including education, which is crucial, and of course, international cooperation and working to resolve the many international challenges we continue to face in the Middle East and elsewhere. These are massive challenges with no quick or easy solutions, and Hans Ala Malik is right in his motion to call for community cohesion and for outreach events which can really be important in local communities. His motion talks of growing Islamophobia, and that is all the more disappointing that this should be the case when we Scots now have our own Scottish Parliament whose basic principles are all about fairness, tolerance, and equal opportunities. In the past, the UK has had a worldwide reputation for religious tolerance compared to much of the rest of the world. So in the new Scotland, we should be enhancing and improving things rather than the reverse. So in conclusion, presiding officer, I again commend Anzala Malik for bringing this debate to Parliament this evening. And I also wish those from the Sikh community involved in the central Gurdwara every success as they prepare for its official opening later in the summer. Thank you. Many thanks. I now call Sarah Boyack to be followed by Jean Urquhart. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. I too want to congratulate Hans Al Malik for bringing this debate forward tonight. And I do welcome this debate because on one level, it's our opportunity to give solidarity to the Sikh community and to stand shoulder to shoulder with them against the horrendous abuse that they have faced by the defacing of the Gurdwara in Glasgow. I think it's also important because it does affect so many of our constituents in their day-to-day -day lives. And our response has to be a statement about what kind, of what kind of society we are and what kind of society we, sh we should strive to build with community cohesion, respect between communities and understanding between people of different faiths and none. And also the contribution of people from different ethnic communities. And the racist graffiti has to be something that we all stand against. It's a symptom of intolerance and lack of knowledge and it's abuse that must not be tolerated. Whether it's Islamophobia, anti-Semitism or anti-Catholic abuse, it's important that we challenge that ignorance and that we stand up for the communities that have been attacked. I think the cross-party action that was referred to in Hanzala's motion is symbolic on one level, but it's also got to be backed by action. We are all leaders in our communities. We all have the opportunity to support a range of groups that work hard in our communities, whether it's racial equality groups or interfaith groups, and to promote community cohesion, respect, understanding and friendship between different communities. I consulted community leaders and representatives in advance of this debate because I wanted some of the views of my constituents to be heard. And a common thread was that the state, whether it is at the Scottish or the community level, at the local council level, needs to do more to support the work of interfaith and racial equality groups. And their observation is that there's less resource available, that the financial pressures and cutbacks are making their work harder, um, not, not for one-off events necessarily, but for their day-to-day -day work, for the long-term work of building cohesion. So, suggestions, more interfaith events to bring together people of different faith groups to work with each other, but also to broaden that out to the general public so that more people understand the great religions that we have represented in Scotland and that understand how they are changing with time in response to uh, links in society. But also support for interfaith groups and investment in the skills that interfaith groups build, bring so that we can build that cohesion together. Support for the work of racial equality councils so that people from different religious faith and ethnic communities can be supported in their work. There are lots of great initiatives across the country. If I was just to talk about the pride we have in Edinburgh, um, the work of ELREC, the Welcoming, the Edinburgh Mela, the Just Festival and the Edinburgh Interfaith Association. And there are others I could name across the different religious communities. 
It's important that we support those organisations, but I think also to make more demands on our mainstream public services so that they take leadership um, in being anti-racist and being against the discrimination that people from different faiths experience. More work in schools so that people from different faiths are brought into schools from a much earlier age. Um, I don't know if the Minister saw the Guardian article that came out last week that looked at um, racial and religious intolerance um, among school children. I think it would be very interesting to parallel that work in Scotland because I sometimes think that we imagine that things, attitudes are much more liberal than they actually often are in practice. More work with the police so that people are protected from racist intimidation and violence and that hate crimes are acted against. Uh, for example, the shop workers in my constituency who experience racist abuse and assaults. There needs to be a price paid for those kind of acts and we need to make sure it's given more attention. And finally, if I can finish on our culture, one of my constituents suggested, what about the soaps we have? What about the dramas that are shown on television and how news reports conflicts? There's much more that could be done to promote religious tolerance, to promote more knowledge and support for our faith communities in what can be a difficult world. So I think there are lots of good ideas. It needs us to work together across the parties. It needs more funding and it also, I think, needs the political support, not just at the parliament, but at the local authority level as well, so that all our communities feel that they are part of our part of our Scotland and that they have a place here and that they are respected and that they are included in everything that we do. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Many thanks. Um, I now call Jean Urquhart to be followed by Ken McIntosh. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, I too would like to congratulate uh, Hansana Malik for bringing this debate to the Chamber. Islamophobia is not an issue that can be glossed over or sidelined. Since 9-11, Islamophobia Islamophobic attacks, verbal and physical, have been on the rise. Islamophobia can affect lots of people, not just those who are practicing Muslims. It provides a gateway for racist ideologies to generalize and for far-right groups to grow. But Islamophobia as a phenomenon cannot be reduced to the fantasies of the racists trying to stir conflict in our communities. Rather, it is something which has been at work in various ways and undertaken by a range of actors. We have seen a process of demonization which has left a legacy of discrimination and the spreading of false ideas about Islam. Sections of the media have been vociferous in their negative portrayal of Muslims. In 2007, a study commissioned by the then Lord Mayor Ken Livingston found that in just one week's news coverage, 91% of articles in national newspapers about Muslims were negative. In many ways, Islamophobia has become institutionalized as part of the war on terror narrative. The cycle of blame and generalization has to be broken. The rise in hate crime is closely linked to the war on terror and the associated rhetoric. This has been shown by screeds of research and evidence gathering. For example, research conducted by the University of Exeter showed that, quote, the major motivating factor for violence against Muslims is a negative and false belief that Muslims pose a security or terrorist threat. To combat this, we need a combination of education and ideological opposition to those who seek to exploit international tensions, often driven by Western foreign policy to suit their own ends, whether that be to incite racism, divide our communities, or build the case for cutting our civil liberties. A survey sponsored by the Joseph Rowntree Charitable Trust found that 80% of British Muslims had experienced discrimination, up from 45% in the late 1990s. Discrimination against Muslims in Britain is going from bad to worse. Unemployment among Muslims in Britain is 17% against a national average of 8%, higher than for people of any other religion. In addition, in the UK, more than 1,000 Muslims have been detained without charge under anti-terror laws, out of which only a handful have ever been convicted of terrorist offences. And here in Scotland, we have challenges regarding Islamophobia. Alistair McIntosh, fellow at the Centre of Human Ecology and co-author of Studies into Racism in Scotland, said Islamophobia is also a problem in Scotland. He says, quote, Muslims in particular are having a hard time and they all seem to get tarred with the same brush it would be true to say Islamophobia is a problem in this country. 
However, this is an area we should be looking to take a lead on in UK terms, while recognising that we face big hurtles, hurtles, hurdles to get, in, to get to a place where Muslims are free of worry about receiving threats or suffering prejudice from others, whether that be from other members of the community, in the workplace, from the media, or indeed from certain politicians. We should be looking to positively combat this by building strong inter-community bonds. Muslims play a huge role in Scotland and are firmly part of our culture, economy and society. And I have to say, the Muslim community in the Western Isles, who are largely Gaelic-speaking, are uh, you know, a, a fine example of just a massive contribution uh, to, to uh, the Highlands and Islands area that I represent. But we must stand as one in the face of all prejudice, and that means standing shoulder to shoulder with Scottish Muslims at what has been a very difficult period in which they have suffered unjust slander and widespread discrimination. And I support Hanzala's motion, particularly because it's cross-party, Hanzala, and not about attacking either the Scottish Government. Let the Parliament, let all of us, really support exactly and deal with the problem that you cite. Thank you. Thank you. And I now call Ken McIntosh. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Can I also begin by thanking my colleague Hanzala Malik for bringing forward this important uh, debate today. And in some ways, we are all proud of the progress that Scotland has made in tackling Islamophobia, racism and prejudice, certainly over the course of my lifetime. But I suspect that while many of us would like to take more pride in Scotland's reputation for tolerance and understanding, we are equally mindful of the harsh day-to-day -day reality for many Muslims, Sikhs and other ethnic communities in this country of ours. Abuse, name-calling, assaults, racist graffiti, these are unfortunately the all-too-common experience for many of our fellow citizens. And an atmosphere of worry, anxiety and fear is the all-too-often common result. Residents in my own local authority of East Renfrewshire, for example, uh, are proud of our good community relations. We are home to a small but uh, long-established Sikh community and as well as a more substantial and growing Muslim community. And for the most part, we enjoy the benefits of living in a vibrant multicultural neighbourhood, but we're not blind to our failings. One of my biggest frustrations in 16 years of serving the local community is the difficulty we have encountered and still face in building a new mosque to meet the needs of residents. Yes, we have the groundbreaking Wood Farm Education Centre and more recently facilities in Newton Mearns and the Hurlet. But so far, every attempt to agree, to agree on a, purpose new, a new purpose-built facility has run into the sand. Now, there are many and varied reasons why each of these separate projects have so far failed to deliver. But in each and every case, there has been at least an element of cultural, ethnic or racial prejudice and hostility. So if I feel politically frustrated and having my hopes thwarted, it's not difficult to imagine how you must feel if you're a peaceful, law-abiding, hard-working Muslim living in East Renfrewshire, yet made to feel, even in some small way, unwanted and unsupported. And, presenting officer, the hostility can be far more explicit than that. Three months ago, following uh, strong political uh, backing from uh, the leader of East Renfrewshire Council, Jim Fletcher, we were able to open the first Muslim cemetery in the area, meeting the long-standing and growing need of local families. Within a matter of weeks, the sign indicating the location of the new Muslim burial layers was covered in racist graffiti. Now, these sort of incidents are not just offensive, they are deeply worrying. And I'm sure I don't have to convince anyone in this chamber that we have to root out this kind of behaviour. But we have a long way to go in doing so, both locally and nationally. And I, for one, would like our parliament and our government to lead by example. I have no doubt whatsoever that across party lines we share the same agenda, the same desire to build a tolerant, compassionate and understanding society. But taking on deep-seated prejudices is challenging. It requires drive and energy. As my colleague Hanzala Malik pointed out, the government is still consulting on the new framework for the race equality framework in Scotland. And that doesn't send out a strong signal by if we have allowed the previous framework to lapse. I met recently with the organisation Tell Mama, which records anti-Muslim bigotry and specifically aims to tackle online hate speech and intolerance. Now, they don't receive any, special, any Scottish Government funding. I'm not trying to argue any special case for them. But when I did raise the question, the Cabinet Secretary replied instead that there are currently more than 300 organisations in Scotland registered as third-party reporting centres with Police Scotland. So on the one hand, I do find, I think we all would find that encouraging, 
But my worry is that despite that large number of centres, many people do not have the confidence to report an incident, and when they do, they're not sure they're being followed up. People need the reassurance that their concerns are taken seriously. And again, I'm sure I don't have to tell the Minister that our, our public sector equality duty includes a general duty to foster good relations within our society. The Scotland-specific duties are the most comprehensive in the UK in terms of the information required, but we need to act on that information. Now that the first two, year progress reports, two yearly progress reports have been published by all listed public bodies, I would wonder, is this not a good time for the Scottish Government to review whether the equality duties are working in the way they were envisaged? And I would welcome the Minister's comments uh, on my request. And I, I can assure him the Government can wholeheartedly rely on Scottish Labour's support in pushing this issue up the political agenda and in turning our good intentions into firm actions. I would thank again my colleague Hans Ella Malik once more for bringing forward tonight's debate. And I hope across the whole chamber we're able to work together to tackle Islamophobia and racism in our society. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can I now invite the Minister Marco Biaggi to wind up around seven minutes or so, please, Minister? <coughs> Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I too join the, the chorus of members who have commended Hans Alan Malik for bringing this motion here, this debate here, which has once again given us a chance to stand united as this chamber is when it is at its best to, to say that together we can do everything we can to ensure that Scotland is Islamophobia free and also free of any prejudice based on religious hatred. We all in here value Scotland's Muslim, Sikh and other faith communities and a really important role that they all play in making our nation a place that is safe, strong and diverse as well. I think the record of this parliament is something that can give solace to anybody who looks at our debates and is concerned about the leadership of the country, that together across parties, across all of our political leadership, we are clear on that message of zero tolerance for religious prejudice. The question, however, that has been raised is what are we doing? What are we doing as individuals, as politicians, as a government to ensure that the attitudes of tolerance and diversity we express in here are prevailing out there in the country? We have a collective responsibility to challenge prejudice. Any form of racial, religious prejudice, including Islamophobia, has to be opposed, it has to be called out. And hate crimes target all those that share a characteristic, but also embarrass us as a society as a whole if they take place. Everyone has the right to be safe, to feel safe in their communities, and everyone should take responsibility for their actions and how those actions affect others. As politicians, we have a responsibility to ensure that when we talk about Islam and issues affecting our Muslim communities, we do so accurately, clear in our language and intentions. And across society, as individuals, everyone has that same responsibility as to do organisations, not least the media. Now, as Mr Malik has noted, we do hear alarming, growing numbers of reports of Islamophobia. International incidents can have a negative impact on our diverse communities and their feelings of security here in Scotland. We must also guard against stories masquerading as news which perpetuate stereotypes against a collective group, whether that's a religion or any other community. And I welcome the participation of all members and all political parties as we are all ambassadors to challenge those views. The Scottish Government's duty as the government of a country containing all of these diverse faiths and backgrounds is to try to create a, a, as safe a society as we can. The Scottish Government has made great efforts to engage with all communities, all religious communities, and I have a list from the last year of four ministerial engagements with Sikh communities, including two visits to the Gurdwara in Glasgow, 17 with the larger uh, Islamic community, including visits to places of worship in Aberdeen, Inverness, Glasgow, and so on. We value in particular with the uh, Islamic communities the relationship that we have with the Muslim Council of Scotland. We're also putting our money where our mouth is. We are investing over 3.1 million in 2015-16 to organisations working to tackle racist and religious intolerance. For the first time, yes, John Finney. 
Thank you. I'm grateful for the Minister accepting an intervention. Of course, a significant investment is investment in the police service, and, and there are issues of perception. It's certainly not my understanding that the police take racist incidents lightly, quite the reverse, but hopefully it's a perception rather than a reality. But will the Minister take to discuss with his Cabinet colleagues the issue of uh, the police response to these racist incidents that have been highlighted, please? Minister. Yes, indeed. Uh, there is, uh, I intend to, to get to the issue that was uh, highlighted about the 300 third-party reporting centres, but clearly that is part of an initiative to make it easier to report these difficulties. And in order to maintain that confidence, there has to then be the confidence to know that if you are reporting, that it will be acted on. Um, to, to go back to where I was in my flow, I was about to highlight the Islam Information Scotland project, just one example, with a grant of £25,000. It's a training and resource provider on Islam, offers individuals and companies which work with or have employees from the Muslim community an insight into Islamic culture, beliefs and practices. It also helps mosques and faith groups to develop their interfaith work. We know as well from our funding of Interfaith Scotland how important that can be, and that funding has also risen quite substantially in 2015-16. But we also recognise there are times when raising community awareness of diversity is sadly just not going to be enough. There are incidents when individuals don't respect difference. And I was appalled to hear of what happened at the Central Gurdwara in Glasgow. The, the, Alex Neil rightly then highlighted the ignorance of a few individuals that was reflected in that act. Uh, Police Scotland carried out their, uh, their approach for dealing with hate crimes. They, followed lines of inquiry, a CCTV check, circulating photos of the vandalism around the community, calling for evidence. And unfortunately, to date, no one has been identified for the crime. But the positive engagement that followed the incident, I think, built the confidence that there was that kind of very serious response to the incident that had taken place and had been reported. We know that misidentification in particular is a serious issue for the Sikh community and are working with the community to address the discrimination that people sadly experience. There is an underreporting of Islamophobia. We recognise that. And we urge everyone who's witnessed or experienced hate crime to report the incident to Police Scotland. And yes, some people may not feel able to approach the police directly, but that is why it has been so valuable to have the third party reporting centres where staff can report incidents on a person's behalf. The more information we have about the levels of Islamophobia, the more effectively we can target the prejudice behind it and ensure that individual incidents are brought to the court. If that happens, courts have long-standing powers to tackle hate crime. And the Scottish Parliament has legislated... Uh... I can give you time back, Minister, if okay. you wish. Hans Alan Malik. Thank you very much for taking the intervention. Would he agree with me, then, that we actually need to do a, a job in terms of communicating with people who have lost confidence in the police services, who have not responded historically in time, to say to them that now there is other avenues where they can approach and get assistance from. Minister. I will certainly back the sentiment that we have to get the message out that these avenues are here. If you report, it will get investigated and action will be taken. As I said, the, the Scottish Parliament has legislated to ensure that offences aggravated by prejudice are directly brought to the attention of the court. And that includes communication of threats of serious violence, threats intended to incite religious hatred. But legislation, government funding, not enough on their own. Attitudinal change is going to take time. Schools are an opportunity and the, we continue to support the National Anti-Bullying Service to uh, deliver Respect Me and schools and local authorities have a role in uh, Curriculum for Excellence as well. And I will investigate Sarah Boyack's Guardian article because I think that could be a very interesting uh, piece of work to, to look at. But not everyone is in school, and so you have the need for more broader awareness-raising campaigns, speak up against hate crimes, which urged people to report incidents to Police Scotland, and then the One Scotland campaign that used a whole variety of media to promote the message that Scotland believes in equality. And that broad message, that has been taken to all corners of society has to continue to be spread by all of us because everyone in Scotland should feel free to express their faith or belief openly and freely without fear for their own security. I take the Gurdwara, a new building that will house 1,500 worshippers that is flourishing 
as a sign of the positivity of Scotland. And uh, I would quote uh, none other than Mr Malik himself, who highlighted uh, that letters of support for the building of the, the Gurdwara have been sent in from a whole host of communities, not just the Sikh community, who are keen to see it go forward. That is the kind of Scotland that we all want to live in. Thank you, Minister. That concludes Hans Ala Malik's debate, and I now close this meeting of Parliament.